Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon to everyone. So this is the presentation outline for my presentation. You can see that I have 17 items that I want to share with you and I have only one hour so I will try my best to, to talk as much as I can and share as much as I can with you. So before I want to go further, I would like to tell you that I have 16 patterns and at that time I did not do anything with the patterns, not until I went for Royal Academy of Engineering UK Leadership in Innovation Fellowship programs in LIP4 in 2017 and from that onwards it inspired and motivated me to commercialize my product. So at present, I already have two of my product commercialized and also two more in going. So I hope that this talk is also one of the inspiring uh, talk for all of you so that after this talk, you will get inspired and motivated just like me. So today, I want to tell you why are we here today? Why technology transfer is important? Who plays the role? Why are we here today? So let me share with you. So some of you are not with us on the series early that we started on the 17th of February. So we have this webinar series and uh, uh, beginning of 17 February. And then today is the last uh, session that I'll be talking on technology transfer implementation. And why we want to listen to all these series lectures is just to improve our commercialization. I'm sure many of you, the audience today, are researchers and you are eager to know how you want to commercialize your product and innovation and also their audience, that technology transfer officer here with me. Okay, why it is important? Why it is important? Because other countries have shown that a well-functioning commercialization activities improve the national economy and keep it globally competitive. So that's what we want to do. And who play the roles? The government, the industrial, the corporate sectors, and the university, the tech the technology transfer office, and you yourself. We have to work together. Then only does the nation benefit. So today, I want to introduce to you some of you who did not know about what is actually technology transfer. So technology transfer actually is a process which is mainly concerned with transfer of technology from your research, your laboratory uh, bench uh, work area to the production and quality insurance environment. So this process which existing knowledge, facilities or capability developed under the research and development funding are utilized to fulfill the public and private needs. And technology transfer include a range of formal and informal cooperation between the technology developer, that will be you if you are the researcher, and the technology seeker, the industrial or whoever the customer who wants your innovation. So technology transfer also is a process that move a technology of IP from one entity to other. So it can be from company to company, from university to company, or from a national lab to a company. So in so doing, there has to be perceived value that is agreed upon by both parties. So in almost all cases, it includes an annual licensing fee when you license your technology, and you also will get a royalty based upon the successful commercialization and your negotiation. So the role of technology transfer uh, in economic development, it increases the physical stock of productive and innovative resources further exploitation of the economical resources. So you have your natural resources, your manpower, your innovation, your physical resources, and also this increase the productivity in terms of our labor, our capital, our natural resources and innovation capacity. So why technology transfer is important? So this is what I would like to share with you, my mentor, John uh, Fraser, who gave an input to me because he was the president for the Association of University Technology Manager, we call it AUTM in United States. And they have conducted a study regarding about the importance of technology transfer. So you have to listen to this because the number are very, very awesome. According to them, among the report top finding between 19 to 96, uh, 1966, 1996 to 217, the university technology transfer led to the United States gross domestic project 
GDP impact up to 865 billion. The gross industrial output over those 20 years was up to 1.7 trillion. And the discovery and commercialization of these technology supported up to 5.9 million jobs nationwide. So that's nothing to sneeze at. So this number is very, very, uh, very, very interesting. And looking at Malaysian scenario, we have 19 public university, five research university, and we also have uh, 53 private university, six foreign university, 403 private colleges, 30 polytechnics, 73 public community in Malaysia. We should have technology that need to be commercialized. And according to our national statistics on university commercialization rates are very, very low. So based on the national Malaysian National 11 plans, the commercialization rate by university have been set for 5%. However, we only reach about 2.1%. So this is very sad, right? So what are the numerous factors that contribute to the poor rates? Failure to understand the needs of the university in helping them to improve their ability in innovation. And according to Val uh, Valent 2016, the fighting for ivory tower syndrome. So this is the crucial in developing country and necessity to assess innovation capability. We look are far-sighted, what we did not look at the near-sighted around us. So another country, European country, have come out for improving their commercialization and the process uh, they want to improve it. They come out with a book. They call it a European Commission at Reports and they come up with the European Knowledge Transfer Metrics. According to this Knowledge Transfer Metric, you can download it in the Internet and at the pages three, page page three and page four, describe the various ways that the university collaborates with the outsider from the research, from the research finding, you got your grant, you do your research, and then the outcome of your research, you come up with the publication processes, the researcher know how the innovation skill, and then we go to the uh, knowledge transfer channel, we publish our publication in the uh, public uh, in the journal, in, and then we have our collaborative researcher, contract research, licensing, company creation, and then we have our user who do the startup, the spin out, citizens, our customers, the society, the government, the policy maker, the entrepreneur, the entrepreneur, the small companies, the big companies and the other factors and the impact is job creation, new product coming over, the new services, the turnover, the profit, the R&D expenditure, the percentage of turnover for the new product and services, new policy come out, new intervention, new improved processes, health and well-being for the civil society. So that what's the European uh, measuring the knowledge transfer metrics. So who benefit the technology transfer? The university, if we keep improving our commercialization, we will increase our reputation in each of the institutions. The industry will say, OK, this university is very good and we are not silo or we are not short sendiri during our research and show the nation that we are no longer in the ivory tower, but are engaged in addressing the real problems in our society. For the private sector, they keep improved commercialization. It will increase the productivity and the global competitive. This will increase the ability to partner with the big league uh, globally and increase the ability to attract the high skilled manpower needed. For the government, of course, we will help to accelerate the job creation and the well-paid jobs and generate well and improve the well-being of the citizen and increase our GDP. So what are the ways uh, the technology is being transferred? There are so many ways. Consulting, consultation, uh, having this seminar like this, and then uh, graduating your students that do the research and innovation from the faculty, moving on, the collaborative research, patterning and licensing, service and outreach and spin off company. So the technology transfer agent, who is the technology transfer agent? The R&D units, the technology transfer office, uh, the university, the public research, technology institute, the laboratory and you yourself now, you have to be your own tra transfer agent. The companies, the supplier of technology, the R&D of third parties, the spin off startup, large R&D department, competitors and other alliances. So I want to share with you in technology, there are two types. 
There are the academic technology and the established import technology. Today's session, I'm going to focus on the academic technology. So this academic technology will focus uh, that will about linking the resident creativity on the campus to the national economy. The established import technology is the one that you import a, a well established product from overseas. So for the academic technology, uh, there are three types of technology. The first type technology, we can categorize it as emerging technology. In this kind of emerging technology, this is an innovative technology that currently is undergoing bench scale testing in which a small version of the technology is tested in the laboratory. So I can say that you are in the technology readiness level four. So for the innovative technology, the technology that has been uh, field tested, you apply in the real environment, you tested it, but you still have a lack history of full scale use. For example, you still have not get a certification or accreditation and so on. So we can label this one as a TRL5 and TRL6. And for the established technology is the technology that have gone through uh, all the standards for certification and all the uh, validation and so on. And this is a fully document that the technology is ready to be the market. It's TRLs 8 and 9. So let us look at the technology transfer processes. There are many processes involved. First of all, in order for us to get commercialization, we have to do our market validation. When we do our market validation, we are at the same time evaluate our product, we are doing the promotion, and at the same time, with the feedback from our market validation, we will innovate our, prod our innovation to improve in doing the research and development, and then we assess again our innovation, and then we document it in, in terms of the information and communication, and do in the flyer and brochure and we start doing our business proposal and try to pitch to the investor to get investment uh, investor to invest in our innovation to license our innovation and get partnership and collaboration so that's the whole process of the commercialization so in terms of the process of commercialization you have the content of the technology uh, transfer so the contents first of all your proper research your proper research means that that the results are reproduced and issues such as scale up means that your research when someone else want to copy and emulate the research can be able to be duplicate and be can be able to scale up so this is called the proper research and other practical now has been addressed everything has been taken up in place and the paperwork so the paperwork is very very important because this is where the institute and the organization have an IP protection and commercialization modality and policy in place. So if you have already a guidelines and IP commercialization in place, it's easy for the researcher and it's also for the industrial to license your innovation or to take up your innovation because there are already a regulation and rules in the policy. And the pricing, the pricing is very tricky because if you too put you put too high for the price, nobody wants to buy your innovation. And if you put too low, then you will lose uh, for your cost for innovate it. So you have to think about the price that is reasonable. Make sure that the price should include all the expenses of your developing the product, including the price of filing the IP and the publicity. So the publicity, you cannot do uh, just a blanket a publicity. You have to have a targeted publicity, whether you want to publicize your innovation is a certain journal, website, let letters to the manufacturer, personal selective visits, or to the uh, website, a certain um, uh, area. And then we have a partnership. The partnership also means that working along with the industry. So when the industry takes up, the manufacturer makes it available to the society. And then when you already have the partnership, we have to get the people to accept our innovation. And in doing that, the people acceptance is very, very important. It's not, uh, it is no use trying to develop something technology that the people will not accept. For example, a very sensitive issue for the Muslim, the product must be halal and for the Indian population that the product that when you do for the food must not have any processes beef in that. So it's a 
vegetarian. So this is all the things that you have to consider when you do and in order to get the people acceptance. That's the proper contents of the technology, uh, technology transfer. And the function of technology team. So this is the key important thing. You have actually three uh, function. One is the function who do the coordination. So the coordination is very important because it coordinate between the technology user and developer. Between the researcher and manufacturer is very important element of the technology transfer. And nurturing. Nurturing is very important because when the technology is still in the baby, you need to nurture it and uh, try to accelerate the technology to up to the TRL 8 and 9. And linkages is very important for you to linkage with the industrial to get networking and to get the business enterprise to connect uh, to the outside world. So this is the factor affecting technology transfer tips. So when I say tips, it is not the tips, but tips stand for technology implementation potential for success. So we say the tips methods. So what are the factors that contribute to the success of the technology transfer? Most important thing is communication for the tech transfer office. If you want to have your uh, tech transfer officer, make sure that the officer who communicate with the industrial are the person who can be able to communicate well. And then we have to think about the factor of the financial, the external factor, the human factor, the characteristic of the human, and also the corporate and the technology factor itself, whether the technology is feasible or not feasible, or whether the technology is sustainable or not sustainable, especially for this uh, pandemic uh, area. So today, uh, I'm going to show now with you what are the background study that I have already studied on the technology transfer implementation that has been implemented in the Malaysian University, the technology transfer landscape, setting and improving the best practice in Malaysia University. So uh, we have already developed the module outline. So basically you can get the copy of the module uh, with the organizer and the module will cover on the uh, introduction about what are the technology transfer, what are the university role for the technology transfer activity that they do, the policy of the technology transfer, the TTO, technology transfer office problems facing, they are facing and also the struggle that they are doing in just in order to accelerate your technology transfer and the pain point and the call for actions. So today uh, we want to see what are the technology transfer office structure and role background study. So when I study the governance of the organization chart in the Malaysian Technology Transfer Office for the five top uni RU University, University Malaya, UTM, UPM, USM and uh, UPM. So we realized that the Malaysian University Tech Transfer Office sitting sits and reports direct under the government of the Office of Deputy Vice Chancellor Research and Innovation. So most of the TTO office in the university sits under the DPT uh, uh, Vice Chancellor of Research and Innovation because DBC is the one who gives them the budget. Except for University Malaya who sit and report under the Associate Vice Chancellor of Industrial and Community Engagement that reports to the Vice Chancellor of Research and Innovation. And if you can recall Dr. Viraj talk in the previous uh, webinar, Dr. Viraj says that to have a successful uh, technology uh, transfer uh, commercialization uh, office, we need to have less layer. So if you can see that all the few universities have the only one layer, directly D DBC, with the VC, but in University Malaya, we have two layer. And for the governance of the organizational chart in the Malaysian Technology Transfer Office, so I summarize only from the three, we realize that most of the employee in the Malaysian University Tech Transfer Office are contract staff and academic personnel and research officer that being seconded. Looking at University Malaya is the least staff that we ever had. We have only seven permanent staff and out of the seven permanent staff is the two lecturer. One is the director, another one is the deputy director and two research officer and the rest are the supporting staff. And these all seven permanent staff actually are the seconded staff. So they are not a permanent staff in the tech transfer office. For the UTM, they got 18 permanent staff and they are also all seconded staff. And for the UPM, they have the highest 20 permanent staff. So what we can see, what can I summarize the example of good practice? 
the good practice governance and organizational charge in the Malaysian Technology Transfer Office, we can say that we are proud to say that UPM is the number one and the tech transfer for UPM called Putra Science Park. And when I do the study, I interview them and I look at the website and all the information, I realize that their, their policy is very, very uh, smart and intelligent because they promote their deputy directors to become the directors af after having served in prior role as a period of three or four years. So be usually their directors are from the deputy directors. Looking at the former Putra Science Park uh, past uh, director, Prof Samsila Roslan, she was the director for 11 years. So being the director for seven years and Pyra having a deputy director for four years, a total of 11 years in technology transfer office in UPM. And the very good policy being imposed by UPM policy is that each of the appointment was based on the three seconded terms. So for example, if the director has been appointed as a director, they have three terms. The first term is for three years, the second term followed by the two years, and then the third terms followed by the one year. Therefore, the director will stay the position as the director for seven years. This is the longest directorship in the history of Malaysia University Tech Transfer Office. The duration of seven years has given her adequate time to blueprint her strategy and implement. Under her outstanding leadership, we can see that PSP UPMTTO has been championed for many awards as listed below. So you can see they got a series of awards and the Intellectual Properties Award organization categories uh, consecutively since 2016 to 2018. And what they have is that they have two deputy directors, one deputy directors that take care of the IP and another one focus on the commercialization whereby, whereby other university, we only have like uh, for University Malaya, we only have one deputy director and for UKM, they also only have one deputy director. But UTM have also two deputy directors, whereby one deputy directors are being located in JB, Johor Bahru, and another one is being located in Kuala Lumpur. And one good about the practice being in the UPM is that their IP deputy directors is a law lecturer that has been appointed in the COVID position since 2013 means that their IP uh, deputy directors has been serving at the TTO for nine years. So this is the tips and the success story of the UPM. So in order for you to deliver a real economic impact and commercialization of patents, need a dedicated team of specialized working full time in the technology transfer as what uh, UPM have done have already implemented. They have uh, seconded all their staff for quite a long duration of time. And we also do not want a non-academic staff member seconded for only, it's not recommended to have an uh, academic staff seconded for only two or one year. So this is not viable. So what our recommendation staff in Malaysia technology transfer for those universities who do not have the funding, this is my recommendation, the minimum to have a very good technology transfer office of eight staff to have one director and to have two deputy directors, one in charge of the IP, another one for commercialization, to have at least five full-time licensing officer that are multidisciplinary, one take care of medicine, physical sciences, social science, and engineering and computing. And you have one dedicated IP, uh, IP officer that will draft and complete the signing of revenue and non-revenue generating licensing agreement and at least one or two administrative supporting staff for all the administration work. So this is the proposed uh, technology transfer organization charge. You can have it in the module, uh, already documented in the module. So if your organization is very small, you can't afford. For example, this is the complete one that uh, university that have the incubator. So for those who do not have the incubator, you can forget about the, the left uh, incubator there. You can just focus on the two, uh, two branch. Okay, let me share with you on the technology transfer key performance index. We call it KPI set by the Minister of Education, especially for the research university. We call it Myra. And this Myra is referred to the public research university TTO uh, document. And under the section E, 
innovation and under the section F on the professional services and give. Looking at the services uh, section E on innovation, the TTO have to perform the patterns, they have to do commercialization products, they have to do technology or know-how licensing outright sales, IPRs and also startup and spin out and also for generating income on the professional service and give. So I want to share with you the unit team layer. So basically uh, the formula are more or less the same that it depends on the number of staff of your uh, science and technology staff and then uh, for a new steam layer for example we have about 1200 1, uh, academic lecturers in the science and technology so for the pattern granted is the factor of 0 0.01 and for the uh, pattern file is the percentage of four percent of the lecturer in your university so this one will varies according to university number of lecturer and then the IPR. However, the commercialization product, the licensing and the outright sale are the fixed. They are number in a year you have to produce a KPI of 10 product has been uh, commercialized at the sales at least a minimum of 20,000 and the licensing fee at least 10 license has been successfully licensed in a year with at least a minimum price of 10,000 and the outright sales at least 10 for 10,000 minimum. So you can see a very, very, a very, very challenging task for the technology transfer in Malaysia to take this uh, job. So what actually are the tech technology office core activities? The activities ranges from number one to number six. If you can see that it's a spectrum spectrums. So it started in development and management of uh, the policy on the IP policy commercialization strategy. And then you start building your IP document, your book. Uh, your blueprint and then building the entrepreneurship culture and capabilities and then do your IP protection and management and then managing the commercialization fund try to commercialize it and then managing the licensing deal and negotiation and monitoring and overseeing the startup and spin off. And I want to share with you the tips for successful technology transfer process. So basically this is the uh, process for uh, pattern filing but uh, uh, for the RU and uh, this is the one that I share with you for university layer. However, they are more or less the same for other research university. It's just that the duration of time might vary depends on the university. For example, in university layer, the process between here is uh, within one month, two weeks and so on. But maybe other university, the duration of time might be varies, but the component of the processes are more or less the same. So this is very good for the university who still do not have a technology transfer and you can read uh, in the module and you can mimic and follow this module as a guidance for you to develop your disclosure and patterns. So first of all, the technology transfer office will receive application from the researcher who think that, oh, I got an innovation and I want to file and protect my innovation. So they will sign uh, their uh, request either to the e-register on the website of the technology transfer uh, or either through the manual copy and then the TTO will review the application and then they will call for a meeting and they will have a committee meeting to evaluate the presentation. So after the presentation, the committee, if the committee recommend uh, the technology, then they will go uh, to do for pattern search. I want to highlight uh, to you that in Malaysia, the usually the technology transfer office did not do the uh, pet, uh, novelty search. We usually hire a third party that is a patent agent to do the work for us. So this third party agent is the one that do the novelty search for us. So it varies the, the, the time and duration depends on the university request. Sometimes I've experienced that I ask the uh, patent agent to do for only for within three days and they can be able to do the novelty search for me. So this is the drafting. So once the novelty search has been drafted by the patent agent, it will go to the uh, committee and they will review again and we will send to the researcher itself to double check and confirm. And if it's, everything is uh, all in order, we will file to the Malaysian Intellectual Property uh, Organization. And then uh, the TTO will submit the copy of filing. Then only the researcher will get, they call it PI. So you will get a number, PI, blah, 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 uh, university, what and so on. So means that your pattern will be already being filed. 
And this is the one that I want to share with you, the Malaysian University IP and commercialization policy in place. Most of the RU University already, most of the RU University already have the uh, uh, pattern in place. So this is University Malaya uh, IP policy. This is UKM, UPM, UTM. And uh, not forgetting the non-RU university also, when I do my research, I realize that there are many non-RU university that have their IP and uh, commercialization policy in place, such as University Malaysia Sabah, University Malaysia uh, Pahang, UTHM, uh, UITM, UMP, and UTEM and a few private university but a uh, private university i couldn't find much so we are still lacking in the private university so this is the finding of the license uh, license finding so in order for you to have a license funding first of all the technology transfer office will appoint the officer to work the, with the inventor and the researcher they will have a discussion and if the innovation is in a medical science then we will identify the technology uh, transfer office that are well versed in the medical science and talk with this one and they will discuss and identify the potential uh, customer or industrial that want to take up the innovation and they will go for negotiation and they have to sign the license so this is the negotiation process so i want to inform you that before you talk to the industrial or whatever your potential customer never ever talk to them before you uh, file you sign a NDA. So NDA is a non-disclosure agreement. Means that after you talk to the industry whatsoever, they are abide to your uh, uh, copyright. They could not be able to tell to other people they cannot copy whatsoever because you they already signed and this was already copyrighted. So this is very important in the negotiation uh, processes. And the outcome of the negotiation process. Uh, the outcome usually I can categorize here. There are five outcomes when you want to negotiate uh, your uh, licensing so this is for licensing okay the outcome will be six one is startup okay and uh, the first of all there are negotiation that you have an exclusive license so you exclusively license your innovation to the company exclusively means that other company other people cannot have only that company a non-exclusive license means that you can give to three or four company to license your innovation and so license means that you give to one company but the license is granted with certain right then you yourself your university have still the right to explore the ip and while the university also have the right to explore the ip and cross license cross license means that you have one industrial partner that is interested in your innovation and this industrial partner have one ip and you have ip so what we do is we exchange I use your IP for free, you use my IP for free. We have a cross license IP for free in mutual understanding. And the fifth one is the outright sales means that you give the ownership of the IP to the company. Uh, number one, two, three and four means that you license your innovation only to a certain period of three years, five years, ten years. But in number five, you give it uh, forever means that you sell it forever so this is the outright sales uh, uh, ip so this is an example of the upm commercialization process you can have a look at the website the processes that they i already explained to you so this is the unique to theirs they have the meeting detail with the technology presentation agree to license terms and so on and this is for the ukm so now i want to share with you with the technology transfer tactics what are the tactics first of all the tactics is very important. You, the government plays an important role all along the innovation and technology transfer pathway. So in Malaysia, there are many policy standards and initiative has been implemented by the government to stimulate and support and accelerate the technology transfer. So the tactic is that you have to be in line with the government's needs, with the industrial needs and in line with what the government's offer. So these are the policy that has been offered by the government. Uh, since 1960, uh, all the export oriented look east policy, science and technology policy, national automotive policy. So if you are doing on national automotive, take up on this policy and get uh, advantage of what they provide. And uh, what I want to highlight one of the successful story for Malaysia that we have the look east policy, whereby we have the technology transfer to automotive industrial assembly of national car and local supply chain. And that's why we have our Proton. 
if we do not have this uh, policy, we do not have our own proton, our own national car. And I want to share with you one of the case study that I found out that Associate Professor Dr. Hanafia Yusuf, he is a Robert, uh, Robert Prona. He claimed he said and he start up a company and he claims that he's a, he is the outcome of the Look East policy in 1980s. So what he did, he already innovate, uh, he already innovate uh, a robot that can uh, introduce a robot for autism therapy application. This is a very interesting, uh, using a robot to make a therapeutic for autism kids and the company called Robert Prina. So they are in the futuristic. So this is very interesting. You can see how they can uh, do the programming for the robot and the robot can be able to talk and mimic like uh, Malaysian um, like the human being and when they say that uh, the first robot ever in the world is Sophia but in Malaysia we have Professor Hanafia already have the first robot we call it Adam that can be able to have a humidate robot. So this is the the the, the trend of the technology transfer policy and uh, I do not want to go further in detail because time is running out, so I have to expedite my talk. So I think Dr. Biru already talked to you on the source of funding. So I want to highlight again, go for the National Innovative Innovation Technology for the researcher who are still struggling to get your innovation, get this opportunity, and also for the MOSTI uh, grand challenge and also for the MOSTI combating COVID. A lot of money is there, 3 million and 4 million and so on. So, uh, and, and at the same time, for the Malaysian technology transfer facilitated by the national policy, there are a policy uh, done by the Minister of Higher Education. We are uh, now finalizing the technology transfer policy guideline for the university. And the MOSTI also have come out with the intellectual property commercialization policy for research and development project fund by the government of Malaysia. So for those university still do not have an IP policy, if you want to do your IP policy, it's, uh, it's advisable for you to refer to this I, IP policy. And then I want to share with you, I'm one of the committee for developing these uh, guidelines, uh, standards, the guidelines for technology, technology commercialization. So CIRIM has come out with the guidelines for technology commercialization and it's very interesting for the industrial, especially the industrial partner who want to do for technology commercialization, you can refer to this guideline. In this guideline, they will uh, inform you understanding the context of the organization and then establishing the technology commercialization ecosystem leadership. And they emphasize it's very important for the industrial and the top management to have a support for the uh, technology transfer. So another tactics for a successful technology transfer is to have a balanced technology uh, transfer organization chart. As I mentioned to you, have a permanent staff of your uh, IP, uh, IP staff and you get at least one uh, RTTP, a professional, uh, professional technology transfer officer to be in place. And then uh, for a good strategy, the director itself, when the university want to nominate the director for the technology transfer, it is advisable to nominate someone who are very senior, who have an experience, who have experience self commercialization and know and be able to do uh, the strategic plan for that uh, uh, centers and also the tech transfer office and have a uh, strategic plans and a budget uh, provided to them. So let me share with you. Uh, I was the director for UM's uh, technology transfer uh, for two years and within the short duration of the time, I can be able to optimize uh, my uh, directorship and I uh, introduced uh, one uh, indigenous uh, program that we call uh, UM Deep Tech. This is a transformative deep technology commercialization program that we already copyrighted and we can offer our program to other universities who are interested to have this program to serve to their technology transfer office. So this program varies from one week program, uh, two weeks program, three months and six months. And I'm proud to say to you that uh, the six month program already uh, graduated. They have graduated on the 27th of February. The demo day was being conducted last Saturday and uh, we have about 150 participants that uh, listen to their pitch and 90 venture capital and angel and we already uh, in the process of uh, establishing 14 startups. So this is a very, uh, we call it a uh, express uh, way uh, to uh, to have a spin off. So 
so engagement and, and support from the university top management is very very important so it's very important uh, for the university i think this one uh, uh, dr viraj and also uh, dr gopi already mentioned in detail so i do not want to go further but i want to emphasize again the technology transfer tactic one of the tactic is to get the support from the top management why i say that because looking back at the success story of upm so I want to go again in UPM, for example, the UPM Technology Transfer Office, every year they got a funding without fail, approximately 2 million for their IP filing and 1 million consistently to run their commercialization startup. They call it InnoHub. So UPM also have an entrepreneurship program, they call it InnoHub, and they have already about 47 uh, startup and they are very advanced. So they won uh, the most entrepreneurial public university. So uh, another engagement and support from the faculty is very, very important under your university technology transfer you yourself in your university for you to do this engagement initiative. So one of the program is to go to your website, have an investment communication with your researcher in your community, send a newsletter, update them what are the activity in your technology transfer, advertise, send flyers, hand out and then listen to them. And also you host a multiple information center, including annual university tech transfer open day. If the school have an open day, technology transfer, I tell you, we have to have an open day. We open our office and let all the researcher come over and complain to you and tell their problems and so on and open a clinic and do consultation for all these researcher who needs your help. So you also have to direct engagement with the in inventor through presentation. Usually we got the faculty research day. We go to the faculty, each faculty and uh, meet them knocking at their doors. And we also have appointment of the faculty of technology transfer uh, ambassador. So I would like to recommend to all the other technology transfer office that one of the success story that you can have that to nominate a ambassador at the faculty as your TTO. And what are the function? The function is that this TTO will be the champion and they will help you to spread the words and provide feedbacks from the faculty member. And they, you uh, to equip uh, with the TTO knowledge, you have to educate this TTO, your ambassador, to advise to their colleagues. So in, in case that your officer are very busy, you can ask the researcher can seek the TTO at their faculty level so they don't have to go to the TTO office. And then uh, in University Malaya, when we have done that, uh, the three top uh, faculty that is very active, I want to say that the Faculty of Engineering, they are most active and Faculty of Science and also Faculty of Medicine. They are the three major source of invasion, innovation in University Malaya for the year, year of 2020. So another program that we should look into another technology transfer tactics is that to have an awards program and incentive. So university is recommended to have awards and recognition outstanding researcher in commercialization. For example, I think many university, uh, RU University have an awards at the end of the day, Anugrah Cemelang and so on, not only your CJ Cemelang or Anugrah Cemelang, but they have a special award. They have a special awards that they give awards. So for University of Malaya, we have a special award. They call it monetary. So they give money to you based on the award concerning with your high tech and impactful social economic product services introduced annually. So we call it uh, UM, UM Excellent Awards. So then this person have to become the university icon. So and the role model. So I, I won the award in 2019 as the uh, high technology and impactful social economy. So I have to be the role model for un my university, Malaya community, and also to represent for Malaysia also. So this is one of your commitment. Uh, when you have already the knowledge, you have to share it. And another one that we have is that the university Malaya also provide a form of page charge fund. So we have also promote one of the channel for them to advertise is to publish in a journal. So the university pay for their journal in Q1 and Q2. Q1 and Q2 only. And uh, looking at the uh, technology transfer, the technology transfer also helped to try to find fundings. We got the prototype fundings uh, given to our researcher as what the 
UMDT, the one that I mentioned to you that we give funding at the same time training to them. And they also have many funding internal external by the governments like the prototype grant, the LRGS, the PPRN and so on. So this is very important for them to help to accelerate their product. So this is the establishment of the spin-off startup. So it's very, very important uh, to have an establishment and the policy in place for the startup uh, for the university is an ideal platform. And I want to tell you that now today, university spin-off company has become a trendy uh, phenomena in the business world. So it's a very prestigious if you are a spin-off from the university. So get this opportunity. And this is the establishment of the spin-off startup. So Malaysia Innovation Lead Model, uh, this is by the uh, Malaysian uh, data by the Malaysian Innovation Lead Model, university spin-off for the economy development in Malaysia University. So uh, basically, uh, they focus on the uh, agriculture-based uh, re resource lead economy and the innovative lead economy. And then, um, this is the establishment of the spin-off uh, in University Malaya. So I want to inform to you that University Malaya is unique because we have a pre-spin-off, means that before you want to open a company, we already have a pre-spin-off you. So we call it a UM uh, business spot. And this B, uh, UM business spot can be able to do business. You can be able to do business, although you have not have a company yet, and you do business under the University Malaya innovation uh, Sandram Brahat company is a University Malaya holding company. So at the moment, now we have about um, uh, 13 uh, pre spin off, and then uh, we are focusing on four pillars on the physical sciences, IoT, green technologies, and agriculture and life sciences. So this is one of the establishment of the uh, to apply for the free spin off. Uh, the processes, you can look at our website, you can also look at the module later on and detail how is the processes for we got a form, you fill in the form and then you complete and uh, the committee will evaluate if your uh, business proposal, you have to write a business proposal, so the committee will evaluate the business proposal, is the business proposal is viable and can uh, we see that can be sustainable, so we can uh, pre-spin off you, we can incubate you for one or two years, then we ask you to accelerate and uh, open your company after that. So establishment of the spin-off startup, there's a lot of advantages of having establishment of spin-off and startup. So Malaysian University have followed this modern practice by encouraging more research development on the uh, spin-off of cooperation. So this is all the advantages. You One of advantages I want to highlight is that until uh, 2012, this is data I managed to get, there was about 1,650 intellectual properties have been created and the research income is worth about 48.7 million through the IP rights and the licensing of the spin-off. So this is one of the wealth generation for the university, for the industry and also for the country. So please grab the opportunity. So this is the establishment of the pre-spin-off that uh, you have a spin-off in University Malaya. We have a spin-off company, about 13 spin-off. In UPM, as I told you, they are the champion and they started their program for the spin-off since 2013. And up to now, they already have 15 one spin-off. And UTM, also the second leading, are very active in having a spin-off company. And also, surprisingly, UITM. And this is the establishment of the spin-off for the university layer so this is a process the same as the pre spin off they they when they want to spin off startup they need to present to the committee second committee they call it um holding board of directors and they one are the one who decide whether they want to take up this company or not company do they want to have an equity or not equity in this company they are very subjective depends on the pro events on the application this is one that i want to share with you the utm policy they have the spin out policy already uh, in place they have two types uh, type a and type b one is the type that have the equity the university have the equity another one is that the university do not have an equity so it depends on which uh, type that you are applying then you go to this process and they will uh, 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 you, they will approve or not approve depends on the evaluation process. And uh, I want to share with you, uh, you can look at the policy uh, spin-off by other universities in the website, but if they do not ab able to share to you, 
I want to uh, share with you that my uh, mentor John Fraser already share with me the IP policy uh, spin of a very good one that has been practiced uh, by University of Wisconsin Medicine. They call it WAR, W-A-R-F. So WAR is very, very comprehensive for those university do not have, especially the private university that still do not have an IP policy. I will encourage you to look at the website and download this. You can learn a lot from this and you can uh, modify and adopt uh, the policy that they have done. They have spelled out. Uh, to avoid the conflict of interest as researcher to become an entrepreneur and academic. And one more thing on the technology transfer tactic that I want to share with you is that please, uh, you have to be aware that in Malaysia, we have one organization that uh, we call it Innovation and Technology Manager Association, ITMA. In United States, it's AUTM, as I mentioned to you earlier, but ITMA is a Malaysia. So this is an accredited uh, uh, professional bodies that they produce our RTTP uh, uh, certified uh, professional technology uh, officer. And uh, you can uh, gain a lot of advantage. Uh, they, the objective is to share innovation, technology, ideas and systematic ways and they also want to foster innovation development market value. They also give you training. So they got a budget. The important thing is that they got a budget from the government under the Malaysian National Technology Venture Blueprint and they have already give free training. So unfortunately, we missed the free training. So the 500 participants already gone, free training given by ITMA, by the government of Malaysia, and they already we already have 500 uh, professional RTTP technology transfer all over in Malaysia now under ITMA. So I would encourage you, if your university has not yet registered a member of ITMA, please do so. But if you, are, you want to register as an individual also, you can take advantage of it. So I, the next one uh, is that on university technology accelerator and incubator. So this is very important because if you want to have a startup, uh, you need to have an incubator where to incubate you. So uh, this is the national and university TTO incubator design consideration. So I want to tell you that the government do provide support. We are lucky to stay in Malaysia because Malaysia, Malaysia government uh, provide so many, uh, so many support in commercialization and technology transfer. So we have to utilize the support. So one of the support is that the government, uh, the government ministry uh, responsible in the incubator namely. So these, these are the government who are supposed to help us in our incubator. So the Minister of Finance, Economic Planning Unit, EPU, and the MOSTI, the MOHI, the Minister of Art, Culture, Heritage. This, this um, organization, a government organization is the one need to uh, help us. Uh, for example, the MOSTI give you the grants, the MOSTI give you the guidelines, and now the MOSTI give you uh, uh, whatever facility, uh, national sandbox. And for the EPU, I want to tell you that the EPU give us the funding for setting up university incubator. So there are active business incubators. So on top of that, you can see there's so many uh, active uh, business incubation. We got the Technology Park Malaysia, Kulim High Tech Park, Multimedia uh, Development Corporation and all these uh, organization. And not forgetting the Malaysia Venture Capital Management as another business incubation, which is in part of government that provide invest money fund to private companies including those in incubator so basically if you already uh, got your uh, innovation and you got a partner a company a private company please get this uh, malaysia venture capital uh, funding okay and we got also serum serum also do a lot of certification and i want to show to you that university malaya and also usm are lucky because at that time uh, the two university uh, were funded by the malaysian government as a pilot to set up the incubator under the rmk10 economic planning unit epu so they have uh, in university malaya we have uh, the incubator we call it um accelerate and in usm they call it innovative incubator university eyes to you but uh, we also have the UPM uh, incubator, InnoHub incubator, and also in UTM, they have an IQ incubator where they rent the spaces uh, for the uh, movers and innovators to, to, to rent the space. 
So uh, I want to share to you that since uh, University Malaya and USM already been given the money, it does not belong to University Malaya. We are the uh, one that uh, service provider. We provide also to all the Malaysian. So you can see that we provide a share lab space equipped with the cutting edge machinery. This is all more on the medical devices in vitro. And we are the only one that have the development quality quality management system KMS for ISO 13485 certification service for medical device. So for those researchers who are still struggling to uh, get a certification for your medic for their in vitro medical device ISO 13485, please come to UMX and to UMCIC. We can be able to help you because we have already get one of our researcher on the dengue series on the Soviet dengue ELISA kit. A prototype that already got the Malaysian ISO 13485 certified under this laboratory. So we welcome all the researcher. You can uh, communicate with us uh, to get more information. So this is uh, another tactics for the technology uh, transfer success is that having a educational element training mentor mentee program. So as you know that University Malaya have a UMDT uh, program training for startup and also in UPM and other universities also have uh, their own program. So I would encourage that for those who do not have, get the facility from UMDT and also InnoHub Inno to help you. So this is the educational training by InnoHub. And on top of that, uh, the one that I want to highlight to you is that it's very important for you to have a mentor mentee program training in your own university. For example, uh, during uh, when uh, we are having uh, in our tech transfer office, we are having the um, prototype grants for PRGS and my lab grants. So I myself, as the director, give the uh, pitching session and guidance to my researcher on how uh, to write the proposal and to pitch properly so that they can be able to get the grant because the tips and so on. So and then uh, we also have a uh, uh, the UK and Malaysia Higher Education Partnership Forum. Remember, in 2000, I think in 2018, uh, we have the UK Malaysia Higher Education Partnership. This is under the Newton funding uh, and also British Council and also my. So these uh, three organisations do the uh, forum for uh, UK Malaysia Partnership and they offer a grant. So at that time, University of Malaysia also take the opportunity and we got the grant uh, together. Uh, with the University of Coventry and we already uh, have a collaboration and optimize our tech transfer office in Malaysia and also the Coventry tech transfer office. So this is the director when they come over. So it's an exchange program. Uh, our Malaysian TTO to go and visit the TTO in UK and the TTO uh, uh, directors and uh, staff to come over and visit uh, Malaysia and we discuss about collaboration and so on. This is one of the success story that uh, we have done. And another one that you have to not only to think about uh, your own organization, you have to think about the professional body like IEEE, uh, organization and so on, keep talking to this kind of organization, professional body and have networking and have a talk together with them. And one important thing that I want to highlight to you is the program provided by MyPo and WIPO. So the program called uh, WIPO e e -I -E. So it's the World Intellectual Property Organization Enabling IP Environment. So they offer for free for all the Malaysian to apply to apply and if you apply, you successfully apply, you will get your own mentor. So this is the one that I want to tell you that I got uh, two of these applications successfully and I was, I am being mentored. So this is John Fraser. So he's a very, very famous uh, technology transfer uh, person, the past AUTM president and I learned a lot from John Fraser about uh, all the tips and tricks and he get us connected with all this MIT, Harvard and so on. So it's good for you, all of you to try to apply this program. So this program is available under Malaysian uh, Intellectual Properties Organization. And another program that I would like to encourage you to go uh, to accelerate for the technology transfer tactics is to get the international program offer 
other than EIE WIPO is for Leaders in Innovation Fellowship Program. So this program is uh, offered under the Royal Academy of Engineering and also under the Newton funding and supported by the Government of Nation Mind. So I will encourage you to be in this program. This is the program that I told you that in 2017 that I went through and motivate me to become what I am here today. And uh, this is the technology transfer pain point and action plan that I'm going to share with you and uh, also not only for Malaysia but Asian uh, country. So what are the problems that we are facing now? We are facing with not uh, our innovation are not in the market driven. We are lack of skilled personnel, the professional technology transfer that can be able to help us to assist us to guide us and our measurement of success through metrics are not direct indicator of our impact. So that's the problem and the misalignment of the intellectual properties protection regimen and the organizational policy and standards. So some of the organization they do not have a policy in place. So it's very difficult for the technology transfer to accelerate because no policy how can you go you do not know what are the direction so this is most important thing to have the policy and they got the pressing needs and also the technology transfer so please read the manual and uh, so uh, I have uh, five minutes more to include uh, my presentation today <laughs> so now I want to include my uh, presentation so what are the recommendation and call to action to all the TTOs and to all the audience and the listener today for this webinar so as you can see that the tech transfer office is in Malaysia setting is under the DVC and need to undergo few processes and approval stages before sending to the final stage to vice chancellor office for final approval. So this process is very time consuming and tedious. This situation will frustrate and discourage the tech TO to be more productive. So sometimes it will stop and it will take time uh, to get approval. So, uh, this is very tedious. So my recommendation and our recommendation is that TTO should be placed directly under the vice chancellor office and compel the TTO as one of the faculty by itself. It can be the faculty of technology transfer, the faculty of entrepreneurship or also institute. So you are directly under the purview of your vice chancellor. So if you are under the purview of your vice chancellor, the TTO can have a dedicated budget allocated and uh, we can also ask the Mohi and also the Mosti to give directly to the TTO instead of going to give to the DVC and the DVC will dilute the, uh, the budget uh, to other uh, things. So then uh, by having this, the TTO has a greater degree of freedom in accelerating and leveraging the technology transfer activities. So that's my first recommendation. We have to change our governance. We have to be under directly to the vice chancellor. And the second uh, problem is that we have to change our organizational charge. We have to have a permanent contract staff because the problem facing now that we do not have a contract, a permanent contract staff. And if it's a, the terms already finished, we will not uh, continue them because we have no funding. And we have the TTO has to struggle to find a new staff and to endure the process of training the staff uh, starting from zero. And then uh, some of the uh, top management, the directors and the deputy directors are being seconded only for two years. And if their blueprint is not being continued by the next director, then uh, it's a waste of the energy uh, being done by the previous uh, director. So this is the problem uh, faced by the Malaysian uh, scenario now. So my suggestion is that to improve, uh, to, uh, to appoint the director is a profession's a senior uh, scientist, a uh, professor that has a passion in depth knowledge in the technology transfer and a good track record of commercialization and skill and leadership. And this uh, director will be able to guide the technology transfer to do a very proper business proposal and to uh, construct a good uh, TTO organization chart as shown in figure one. And then uh, TTO should have also their permanent human resource. As I mentioned that one deputy uh, one director and two deputy directors, especially one to take care of IP and also the commercialization and a, at least a RTTP a professional chartered uh, a technology transfer officer that can guide. So as you know that just now ETMA already produced 500 RTTP and they are all over the country now so we can hire them and uh, to appoint a long term secondant for the director and deputies as what the UPM already uh, implement and show a success story, at least a minimum 
over six years uh, in terms. And uh, my recommendation, uh, another recommendation and call to action is that the most university TTO has struggled to find findings and to sustain the activity and task of the TTO. So the Myra KPI with the limited of and adequate of but, uh, budget uh, obtained. So it will result in the TTO activity not being focused and optimized it should be. So my recommendation is that to get the government or the Mosti or Mohi uh, to revisit their TTO Myra KPI and to get them to fund directly uh, given to the TTO office uh, not to allocate via the DBC because if you buy the DBC, DBC have to share with also many people. So we have a very dedicated budget to the TTO itself. And another one recommendation uh, is to have uh, the problems with the conflict of interest uh, by the university. Some university do not have the IP policy in place and then uh, then it will be in problem. So my suggestion is that the first thing to do to improve your TTO is to have the IP uh, commercialization and spin off uh, in place. And the last one that uh, if uh, problems of conflict of interest because some researcher owns equity more than 50% and so on, how are you going to deal that? That's why I told you that you have to have your IP in place and you want a good um, reference that you can refer if you want to do the IP in place, look at the WAF, the Wisconsin uh, University of Wisconsin Medicine uh, IP policy that they have done. And the last one is that uh, most university TTO have to struggle to perform their duty, lack of skills, knowledge uh, and training. So I will encourage that the top management and the organization level to give a strong support to all the TTs or office uh, commercialization activity and to give at least uh, one uh, spelling error. Sorry, to give at least one RTTP in the TTO and continuous the TTO must conduct a continuous educational and professional training program that necessary to alter the current and mostly a negative perception about the commercialization in the university community and to provide faculty assistance in commercialization effort. Import importantly, to make awareness so commercialization is very important, why it's important and so on. So lastly, I want to share you one inspirational quote that has been uh, said by Thomas Edison. I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. It means that uh, Thomas Edison have made, uh, have innovated 10,000 times uh, to or in order for him to find one light bulb is successful. It means that he have to endure 10,000 times of his research in order for him to find one light bulb. So for me, to all the innovators and also the technology transfer office officer and researcher, do not give up. You must be have passion. You must have resilience. You must have determination because uh, listen to Thomas Edison. He failed 10,000 times uh, for his uh, research on the last one. He got the innovation. So happens to all to us also the technology transfer. So another quote that we want uh, I want to share with you is uh, from uh, Steve Jobs, the CEO of Apple. And the ones who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. So Malaysia, uh, why wait for? You can do it. Malaysia boleh. So I, uh, lastly, I would like to acknowledge to all the uh, person uh, and organization that already give uh, um, uh, information for my slide today and uh, especially for Royal Academy of Engineering, uh, University Malaya and UMCIC, Center for Technology Transfer, UMCIC and um, my center, Faculty of Engineering and also to U, uh, UPM who share a lot with me, uh, Dr. Zahira, Dr. Wan and the past uh, uh, press, uh, director of uh, UPM, Prof. Shamsila and also the president for ITMA now and also the director for UTM, uh, Prof. Uh, Noor Azurati and also to uh, Dr. Biru uh, and all my colleagues in this uh, webinar series and Mike, not forgetting Mike, and also lastly to my mentor, uh, John Fraser. With that, uh, I end my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for listening to my talk today.